Hi, my name is Brian Conklin. I'm a technical marketing engineer with Cisco, and I'm going to show you some of the capabilities of the new Cisco ASA 1000V cloud firewall. Now first, let's set the stage a little. Now, for this demo, we've created a cloud environment, and there are three cloud tenants. Each represents a different company. The cloud provider is running this all on VMware, and the Cisco Nexus 1000V virtual switch is installed. And when they provisioned each tenant, they provided each company with a Cisco VSG, or Virtual Security Gateway, to secure communication within the tenant space, and also an ASA 1000V to perform as the edge firewall and protect the cloud tenant from the rest of the internet. Now each tenant uses the cloud for something different. On the left, Bluthco uses their cloud to provide software as a service, so they host web and database servers in the cloud. Next, Cogswell Cogs uses the cloud for virtual desktops and provides thin clients to their employees. And on the right, Spacely Sprockets uses the cloud for software as a service, but they only host their web servers in the cloud. They like to keep their database servers in the data center at their central office in the physical environment shown here. Now let's focus on Spacely Sprockets for a moment. They have a physical ASA firewall protecting their data center. And now they have this new ASA 1000V cloud firewall protecting their cloud environment. They can create a VPN tunnel between these firewalls, essentially extending their existing network into the cloud with the same visibility, accessibility, and control over the cloud that they have over any other part of their network. So when a Spacely Sprockets employee or customer connects to that web server, the web server can access the database server through the VPN tunnel. Now, as often happens in a cloud environment, these tenants may be built on templates. And so for ease of deployment, they might have the same IP address space. Now, this is usually fine, but it may cause a problem if the two tenants need to communicate to each other. For example, in this case, our tenant Cogswell Cogs is a customer of Bluthco and so needs to access their software as a service using their virtual desktops. Now, with the ASA 1000V, this isn't a problem. The ASA 1000V provides DHCP capabilities to the virtual desktops so they can be easily spun up and deployed, and then provides NAT capability between the two tenants, so that even though the virtual desktops and the web servers might have the same IP address space, they can still communicate. Let's take a look at this in action. Here is the VMware client connected to a vCenter, and you can see on the left side we have our three tenants. Each tenant has the ASA 1000V and a VSG. And notice that both are virtual machines, which allows for a lot of flexibility because these virtual machines can be cloned, they can be vMotioned, uh, they can be deployed in all the same ways that any other virtual machine can. Each ASA 1000V virtual machine has two data interfaces. One is the inside, one is the outside, and it has a network management interface and a high availability interface, which is used for failover. That failover mechanism on the ASA 1000V is exactly the same as any other ASA appliance. Now remember I said that the virtual desktops in one tenant need to access the web server in the other. Let's go ahead and try that now. We'll bring up our virtual desktop in one tenant, and we'll connect to the web server in the other tenant. You can see our ticketing system comes up. This is a virtual application that the tenant is hosting. If we go to the logs, you can see that we've built dynamic TCP translations, meaning that NAT has been used to make this communication function. Now let's include the VSG. The security provided by the ASA 1000V and by the VSG is very complementary. Each virtual device serves a role in the overall cloud security solution. In the previous example, our virtual desktop accessed a web server that served a ticketing system. But let's say another department at Bluthco needs a similar ticketing system. They don't want to rebuild it from scratch. A lot of the power of virtualization is that you can easily deploy these applications. So rather than building it from scratch, they want to clone the original web server. Here we have the original web server and the clone that we made of that web server. Now these two VMs are exactly the same in every way except that we've given the clone a new IP address. Now this clone is for the new department, but because it's the same in every way, it's going to try to access the database from the old department. Now this is not what we want. To see how we might handle this, let's take a look at our security policy in VNMC. Here you can see our tenants in the VNMC as well. 
If we drill down into one of our tenants to look at its policies, we can find zones. These are security zones that we've created. And we have a web zone and a database zone. And these zones specifically state that the instance of the web server, VM, can talk to the instance of the database server, VM. That means that any other communication between VMs would be denied. To show you the other kind of criteria we can use to create zones, let's add a new one. Now you can see here that we can use layer 3 IP addresses like any other network device, but we can also use VM attributes. For example, we can create a zone based on all VMs on a specific hypervisor or a specific instance of a VM. And when we choose one of these attributes, we get a populated list of all of the items in that tenant that are applicable. In this case, all the virtual machines. This information is actually being pulled directly from vCenter by the VNMC. Now if we test our connection to the web server again, but this time we'll connect to the cloned web server. Let's see what happens. So we connected to the server, but the web application could not connect to the database. That's because VSG has blocked it. VSG knows that even though this web server is the same and has all the credentials to the database, it is not the same VM, and so it's denied. This is where the real power of VSG lies, because even though these VMs, the, both the web servers and the database, are all in the same IP space, the same VLAN, even the same port group in VMware, VSG is able to inject security services in between these VMs and control how they communicate with each other. Now going back to the ASA 1000V, remember it protects the tenant space from outside threats. So let's bring up our hacking system out on the internet and attack the Bluthco web server. First let's try sending just a malformed packet. We'll send a packet with a sin flag and a fin flag set at the same time. Now this isn't valid and the ASA knows that so it produces an IDS alert firing a signature that indicates that the SYN and FLIN are both set and drops that traffic. Now let's try a SYN flood attack. We start our SYN flood and you can see a lot of TCP connections are built, but then our embryonic connection limit is exceeded. This means that the ASA has detected the SYN flood attack and is now intercepting those TCP packets. If the TCP three-way handshake completes, it'll let the connection into the web server. But if not, the SYN packets will simply be dropped, preventing the resources on the server from being used up. So you can see that even though the web server is currently under a SYN flood attack, if we try to connect from our legitimate host, the connection works just fine. Now because this is all running on the Cisco Nexus 1000V virtual switch as the underlying architecture, it allows you a lot of advantages. Both the ASA 1000V and the VSG use the VPATH technology in the Nexus, which means that once security decisions have been made, a lot of the processing can be offloaded to the Nexus 1000V virtual Ethernet module in the hypervisor. This means that you don't have to install your security services on every hypervisor. You can actually keep them just as a VM that can be easily vMotioned as needed or cloned. It also means that you can separate your business critical virtual machines from your network services and have them run on different ESX servers so that they don't use the same computing resources. It also means that if you need more performance or you have more tenants that require firewalling, you can just clone the ASA 1000V or VSG as many times as you need, which gives you the flexibility you expect from a cloud environment.